Reset. Reset, reboot, restart, recreate, restore, revive, revitalize, resuscitate, rejuvenate, recalibrate. That's a whole lot of rewords, right? What an opportunity we have sometimes in life to hit the reset button. We talked this morning in discipleship study about just that thing. Now, of course, we understand uh, many of us have had to reset from time in our lives to time. Amen, somebody. If you've never had to hit reset, uh, I'll simply say this, just keep on living. I, I was recently working on with something on a website, uh, and every time I tried to make a change on my document using this website template, uh, it would mess everything up. Uh, I discovered that every time I tried to make an adaptation, uh, it would mess things up a little bit more. I wonder if there's anybody in the virtual sanctuary this morning that can testify that when you try to fix something, uh, you've had the experience of making it even worse. Here then, as I am trying to figure out the right approach so that I could actually make and save my changes while I was making a bigger and bigger mess, I all of a sudden, Brother Cameron, I saw a button that said, reset to default setting. I thought then, why not? I have tried everything else. I have been literally taxing myself. And while I was in the application on my PC, I also had Google open on my cell phone, trying to see what others in the user community were saying. But it was when I saw that little button that said reset to default settings that allowed me then uh, to end up in a place uh, of starting over, uh, uh, in a fresh place, uh, uh, in the place uh, that I have begun the work, and also uh, in a different place, uh, because I had already uh, uh, made a mess. Uh, amen. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I'm so thankful uh, that every once uh, uh, in my life, uh, uh, every now now and again, I realize what a privilege it is to hit reset, to be able to restart, to be able to be rejuvenated and resuscitated, to experience renewal, to be able to recreate. It is interesting then, in this season that we've been in now for two years plus, that God in some ways has a allowed some of us to hit the reset button. Uh, if you've had to hit reset uh, in the last couple of years, uh, uh, send me a note in the chat. Uh, all it needs to say is reset, and I'll know uh, that you are in the club. Uh, if you've had to hit reset, uh, not only in the last two years uh, because of the global pandemic, but if life itself uh, has caused you uh, to have to hit reset uh, every now and again, uh, I heard this moment morning of folk in discipleship study uh, talking about hitting reset uh, in their career, uh, reset in their vocation and ministry, uh, reset in their personal relationships, uh, reset in their expectations, uh, reset in their lifestyle, uh, reset in their bodies, uh, reset in their attitude, uh, reset in their physical location, uh, reset following the death of a loved one, uh, reset uh, financially, uh, reset after a life trauma, uh, reset in our mindset. Uh, I, I'm glad to know then uh, that between those who were with us this morning uh, and those testifying in the chat uh, that I'm not the only one uh, who's had to hit the reset button. Uh, here in the text, uh, we find ourselves uh, with Luke the physician uh, uh, continuing then uh, his uh, exposition of what happened happened uh, when Jesus started his ministry uh, uh, all the way through the time that Jesus was crucified at Calvary uh, and then the time 
that he was buried in a borrowed tomb and then got up with all power in his hands. Here then we find Luke in the opening of this text uh, reminding us that he's already uh, been writing about these things. He in fact tells us uh, that he is in Acts continuing then uh, the story. Uh, he is continuing then uh, the story with the ascension of Jesus. Uh, and then uh, how then the giving of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's interesting to me that we find ourselves here in the text between the resurrection of Jesus and the ascension of Jesus. We find ourselves between Easter and Pentecost. Anybody ever been in between? Have you ever found yourself between here and there, between where you were and where God was sending you, between what used to be and what was going to be? I don't know about you, but I've been in between. And so I find myself in the text. I find myself between Easter and a Pentecost, I find myself able then to relate to the apostles, those whom Jesus had chosen, those who had seen him in ministry, those who had been around when miracles were performed, those who had been minding their business, ah, some of them fishermen, some tax collectors, some worked with their hands and artisans before the Lord called them to ministry. I see them then here in a season where Jesus has already been resurrected, where Jesus is in a a 40-day period of following Easter, where he shows himself, the Bible says, with many infallible proofs being seen by them and many others during this 40 days and speaking to them, Jesus is teaching about the kingdom of God. It is then in this place where we understand that the disciples were being prepared for a reset. They had already had, I heard Brother John Mosley say this morning that you don't hit the reset button once, maybe not even twice or three times, but in this life, many of us, thanks be to God, have an opportunity to hit reset time and time and time again. The disciples had had a reset when the Lord called them. The disciples had had a reset in the midst of ministry as they learned more about him. The disciples, no doubt, had had to hit reset after Jesus was taken into custody. God knows that they had to hit reset as they fled Calvary, as Jesus was being crucified. They had to hit reset as they hid from Roman soldiers, from Pharisees and Sadducees, from those who were looking to know about others who had been affiliated with Jesus. These then still would have known what it meant to hit reset. Here then in the text, we discover that Jesus in verse four, the Bible says was assembled together with them. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. This morning, child of God, I want to speak to you out of the word of God. Sometimes we get anxious. Sometimes we're ready to roll. Sometimes we want to move because we feel like it's the right thing and the right time. But every once in a while, God will put a weight in your spirit. Can I tell somebody that you've got to be prepared before you hit reset? I heard Sister Wilma Holmes this morning talking about a, a big reset in her life and the need for preparation. She was all in the Kool-Aid, amen. Uh, she had already opened the Kool-Aid packet. Uh, she had two good cups of granulated sugar, uh, might've had a little bit of Sprite or 7-Up. Uh, she was so far in the Kool-Aid uh, this morning. Uh, but I would suggest to you, uh, 
that here Jesus uh, appears to the apostles uh, uh, for the express point uh, of helping to prepare them uh, for what was coming, uh, to prepare them uh, for a new day, uh, to prepare them uh, for a new deal, uh, to prepare them uh, for some new decisions, uh, uh, to prepare them uh, for some new directions. Uh, I wonder this morning uh, if anybody in the virtual sanctuary uh, knows what it is uh, when God begins to prepare you uh, for something new and different. Uh, I know there's at least three folk uh, who God uh, sent you some signs. Uh, he spoke to you, uh, he revealed some things to you, uh, before it was time to move, uh, we're talking about preparing uh, for reset, uh, preparing uh, for change, uh, preparing uh, for transformation, preparing uh, for something new. Here then, uh, uh, in the text, uh, Jesus then uh, instructs then uh, the disciples first and foremost uh, to wait in the right place. Uh, that'll preach this morning. Uh, every once in a while, uh, you and I have to learn uh, not just to wait on God, but to make sure that we are in the right place while we're waiting on him. Jesus instructs them to wait in the holy city, Jerusalem. He commands them, in fact, while they were tempted to want to leave Jerusalem because of the fear of being found out as being a follower of Jesus, it would have been safer, no doubt, for the disciples uh, to leave Jerusalem. But Jesus said, uh, uh, you stay right there, uh, child of God. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, we want to flee the scene. Sometimes we want to get out uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, sometimes we want to leave that hard place uh, and that difficult situation. Uh, but every now and again, uh, we hear Jesus say, uh, stay right there. Uh, wait right there. Uh, don't leave too soon. I, I've got something for you. Uh, uh, every once in a while, uh, in order for us to prepare uh, for a reset, uh, for us to be properly prepared, uh, we have got to learn some patience. Uh, this morning, uh, if you're praying for patience, uh, uh, I'm praying with you. Uh, uh, that is patience uh, to wait on God. Uh, patience to wait uh, uh, in a place uh, that I might feel like fleeing, uh, a place where I might uh, want to leave uh, with the quickness. Uh, I would say to you, uh, beloved, that we must learn how to wait and be in the place where God has promised to show up. If you're praying for the patience to wait this morning, we're praying with you. Amen. We get anxious. We want to move. We want to go in our own time. And yet, beloved, we see in the word of God that God has his own time. And even in places that seem difficult, places that seem dangerous and undesirable, there are times when God is preparing us and he desires us to wait in that place, to stay right there until it's time to hit the reset button. Change had not yet come. The power of the Holy Ghost that was promised had not fallen. And yet God speaks through the Lord Jesus Christ to the apostles telling them to wait right there in Jerusalem. Sometimes beloved, we gotta wait in places that look undesirable, mm, that are difficult, amen. And that to be very candid, give us, amen, a sense of unrest or what I call dis-ease, amen. Here then, Jesus tells the disciples to wait, not to depart from Jerusalem, that part of preparation is having patience, amen. Not just that, uh, Jesus goes on and he reminds the disciples of the promise. Uh, every once in a while, part of our preparation, amen, is our also 
having to reflect, amen. Reflection then becomes a part of preparation. I know we live in a time where everybody is moving 99 miles per hour, where we oftentimes forget what we had for breakfast by lunchtime because we are moving so fast. And yet Jesus in instructing the disciples and us reminds us in verse number four, where he tells them, even as they are assembled together and commands them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the father, which he said, you have heard from me for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Reflection is necessary, beloved, every now and again, that we might then be reminded of what God has already promised us. Have you ever taken a few minutes just to think back over what the Lord has already promised you and to see where you are in receiving that promise here then, hitting the reset button. There's nothing wrong with change, nothing wrong with transformation, nothing wrong with movement. And yet, beloved, when we are not prepared, when we don't take the time to reflect truly, sometimes we end up hitting the wrong reset button. Amen. We end up moving the wrong direction in the wrong way. Why? Because we didn't take enough time to remember what the Lord has already spoken. One of my favorite hymns says this, the Lord has promised good to me. How many of you know that what God promises, God performs? I every once in a while have got to remind myself. I have to be reminded rather through the Holy Spirit of what God has already promised. I've got to reflect on a, a progress that has already been made, uh, promises that have already been fulfilled, and uh, my current position and situation. Uh, here then, Jesus is telling them, uh, uh, God has already promised. Uh, you already know what's coming, uh, uh, but you need to remember every once in a while uh, the Lord's promises. Uh, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, uh, this is why reflection is so important. Uh, this is why being able to remember God's word and his promises uh, is so necessary. Here the apostles uh, uh, in verse number six, uh, they all of a sudden uh, uh, lapse back in, Lord have mercy uh, uh, to asking then the question. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, meaning Jesus, uh, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The disciples uh, uh, reminded me uh, uh, of how I sometimes uh, uh, manage the promises of God, uh, that sometimes I know the promise, uh, uh, amen, uh, but yet uh, over time, uh, as I wait on the Lord, uh, uh, that I then lapse back uh, out of God's promise uh, and into my preferences. Amen. Uh, that's part of why reflection is so necessary. Uh, uh, waiting on the Lord, uh, uh, being able to be patient uh, uh, before the Lord does uh, the new thing he's promised to that if I don't reflect, if I don't have a season of remembering and allowing the Holy Spirit to remind me of what God said, I may in fact begin to move in my own desires, my own preferences, my own peculiarities. And yes, beloved, we have preferences. Yes, we have our own preconceived notions. We have our own ideas. We have our own desires. Here then, the disciples uh, uh, make it clear that what they thought they were waiting for, uh, what they thought Jesus had come to do, uh, that they were back before, ah, uh, uh, even before Calvary, uh, that they had forgotten the revelation uh, that Jesus had already given them about who he was and why he had come to the earth realm. Instead of salvation, uh, uh, they were then thinking about restoration. Uh, instead of spiritual power, uh, they were thinking about political power. Uh, I don't know about you, but every once in a while, I thank God for forcing me. Uh, yes, I said it, forcing me, because oftentimes I must be forced 
into uh, the rest and the reflection season. I know I'm not the only one uh, who tends to get a little impatient, uh, uh, who tends to think uh, uh, that because I know the destination uh, that I can just move uh, and I can get her done. Uh, I, I stop by to tell somebody uh, that rest and reflection uh, is an important part then uh, of getting ready for God to do a new thing, uh, of getting ready for a new season, uh, of getting ready for a new New direction of getting ready for a restart and a reset in your life that you must first allow yourself to stand still. You must allow yourself to learn how to wait patiently on the Lord. You must also learn how to rest in him and reflect on his promise so that you then can be reassured of the Lord's purpose. Here then, they're asking what one question. Uh, he says to them, uh, that's not your business. Uh, I want somebody to know, child of God. Uh, you might be wondering right now, God, when? When are you going to do it? Uh, when are you going to move? Uh, when am I going to see some results? Uh, when are you going to answer my prayer? Uh, when are you going to change hearts? Uh, when are you going to change minds? Uh, when are you going to give? Uh, when are you going to open? Uh, when are you going to heal? Uh, when are you going to deliver? Uh, here then Jesus uh, reminds the apostles and us uh, that it's not for us to know the times uh, or the seasons uh, in which God has put uh, in his own authority. Uh, but all we need to know uh, is that uh, he has made a promise. Uh, uh, if I wait on him, uh, if I rest in him, uh, then and only then, uh, verse number eight of Acts number one, Jesus said, but you shall receive power. Uh, if you're wondering uh, how to prepare uh, to hit reset, uh, how to prepare to go to the next level, uh, how to prepare for God doing something new in your life. Uh, let me tell you, honey child, uh, you need power, uh, uh, not power that comes uh, from political office. Uh, you need power, uh, not power that comes from money in the bank. Uh, you need power, uh, not power that comes from who you know. You need power, not that comes from degrees ah, and education. You need power, not the power that comes ah, from living in the right neighborhood. You need power that not comes from having the right zip code, but you and I need power then to walk, power to do, power uh, to understand, uh, power to speak. Uh, ah, Jesus promised you shall receive power uh, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Uh, uh, there's some things uh, that God has for you. Uh, there's some things that God has for me. Uh, there's some things that God has promised uh, that he can move uh, until we have power. Uh, I wonder then uh, about the hitting reset. Uh, I wonder then uh, about how often uh, I have walked into uh, what I thought was a new season uh, uh, without being properly prepared. Uh, how often uh, has I uh, pushed through uh, kicked the door in, made up my own mind, did it my way, only to discover that I was not ready for what God had next for me. Many of us are praying for our next. Amen. We hear and we sense in the spirit realm that God is up to some new things. And yet, child of God, it's important for us to prepare for what God is trying to do in our lives next. The truth of the matter is there's some earthly experiences that in my flesh I could never prepare for. Many of you agreed this morning that some things it didn't matter. You just couldn't ever be fully prepared. But there are some things, beloved, that not only can you prepare for, but must you prepare for. Jesus knew, amen, ha, ah, he knew that the apostles had purpose in their lives. He knew that there was divine assignment on their lives. It took, amen, a dramatic event in the lives of the apostles. That is the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. 
for them to truly begin to prepare for what was about to happen in this season between Easter and Pentecost when we celebrate the birth of the church. The question is, what is God preparing you for? Because surely even where you are is not where God desires for you to be and to stay. The word of God says that we are to grow from one level of glory to another in our vocation, in our career. Beloved, let me tell you, there's another level. Amen. In our relationships, our marriages, our friendships, there is another level. Ah in our health and in our wellness, even with the healing that we have, there is another level. And the question is, are we preparing for the time when God hits the reset button? Are we this morning, I heard Clyde Williams say, sometimes we're just comfortable and we're complacent. It's why making sure that we're in the right position. The truth of the matter is, I can reset my computer over and over and over again. I can do it by hitting a little button on the screen. But in order to reset my life, amen, I've got to have a relationship with the manufacturer. That is, I've got to have a relationship with God himself. And his son, Jesus, told us that we can't have a relationship with God the Father, our creator, our manufacturer unless we have a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. I wonder this morning about the position that we're all in. Are we in the right position with God? That is, are we in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? I wonder this morning, am I not only in position with respect to my relationship, but have I learned how to wait on God? Am I right now waiting on the Lord to open that door, to open that window for that new opportunity? Or have I decided I'm just going to do it my way, fly by the seat of my pants and figure it out as best I can? Beloved, not only do I need to be in position, but I need to have the patience to sit in the places that sometimes are the most difficult the places, amen, that are the most challenging, the places that seem the most difficult and even dangerous for me to be in. But I can sit there if I know that the Lord himself has promised good to me. And if I understand that he's working patience in me, if I'm in the right position, if I am learning to have patience, then beloved, the Lord will allow me a season of rest and reflection. What am I doing with the opportunity to listen and to look, to hear and to perceive? Is my perception one of being anxious and resentful that I seem to be in the holding pattern? Am I perceiving that everybody else is progressing except me? Or am I resting truly in the Lord Jesus Christ? Am I reflecting on what he's already done in my life? Am, am I able to be reminded of the specific promises that he's made to me? Am I preparing myself spiritually? mentally, physically, for God to do something new in my life, in my relationships, in my ministry, in my vocation. This morning, beloved, I stopped by to tell you, God is indeed in this season, in the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of all that we continue to experience. He has, in fact, been hitting reset buttons in just about every area of our life. Certainly, God is not finished doing a new thing. And yet, beloved, while we want newness and the excitement of rejuvenation and revitalization, the truth is we can't truly experience it 
without proper preparation. So this morning, beloved, I'm praying for each and every one of you that in the season that you're in, as God prepares you for next level, for new seasons, as God prepares you for a reset, pray that you will in this season allow the Holy Spirit to prepare you for what God is doing. I don't know about you, but I'm praying for Pentecost. Amen. I am praying for Pentecost. But then I remember Jesus, that it was that they needed to wait, that they needed to prepare before the promise could come. How prepared this morning are you? How prepared am I? All over this platform, every head bowed, every heart 